I act because I'm broken mm. uh, oh. in a lot of pieces. Mm. And uh, acting gives me a chance to reconfigure those pieces into a thousand different things uh, that are positive for people to watch. And uh, eventually I will be ground down into a fine powder. And, uh, <laughs> and snorted? Is that how you want to go out? It's it's snorted. It's for right. those of you who are watching, there is a guy that you will get in the mail for Jim's answer. <laughs> no, this that was is, clear. This is an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Remarkably truthful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We're all broken. Let's face yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, why we're. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I, don't yeah. the <laughs> I was looking yeah, through you, broken. actually. <laughs> Hollywood likes to sort of lock people in lanes. They want something, a specific thing from you. Most often, it's because it's you've given it to them before. What are the things that you get approached for that you just say, "Oh, not this again"? Borat, because Borat was the first openly anti-Semitic character. Mm -hmm. That I suddenly start getting Jewish characters as if suddenly I was the only Jew in Hollywood. <laughs> so there was a lot of, you know, will you play this Jewish character or this Jewish character? Oh. I think somehow Borat being anti-Semitic made me appear that I'd be very good at All of a sudden Jewish you were character. really, I was really Mr. Jew, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You killed it, man. Can I ask Amazing. you Amazing. I love that you? movie so oh, much. And I love much. you. I love thank your you. yeah. uh, yeah. approach to uncomfortable people and yes. subjects and the and way scaring you... scaring the crap you, out of yes. us. You just <laughs> lay bare the people who are supposed to be in control and aren't. And I love it. Oh, I'm very... Thank you very much. Well, that's a huge, what would you uh, like to play? What, I mean, if you're, in your fantasy, what would you like to play? I don't know. I think something that is... When I was at university, because obviously the, you're not in a box there, I, I would play, in the amateur dramatic stuff, I would play this genre that was called tragedy comedy, which is something like Cyrano de Bergerac or even like Fiddler on the Roof. You have the character starts off as really funny, the audience love them, and then the second half, tragedy happens. Right. And then... You, because the audience love you and are engaged with you more because you've made them laugh, they transition really quickly into getting sad and crying. Mm -hmm. So my eyesight's not very good, and I remember playing Cyrano de Bergerac, and I didn't know what these white, I'd see bits of white coming up, and I, I go, what are they? They, go, they were tissues. Uh -huh. People were starting to cry. But it's a genre that you don't really see much anymore, which obviously existed back then, which is the idea of, Funny people who can then, because you've kind of got Hooked the you, yeah. audience by the kishkas, you can then <laughs> turn it around and get them crying. Yeah. So I think something like that would be... I can I coin a phrase? Please. Calamity. That's Cal what I look at it as. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, my show is calamity. Yeah. It's about a calamity. Is there yeah. a oh. And it's, it's uh, handled with humor. Yes. And uh, levity. Uh, and pretty much that's what I do. Yeah, uh, you know, every uh, trauma, and, and I could, you know, build a ladder to the stars with the things that have happened or the things that I've had to endure, but they've all turned into something really creative. Wow. Mm, you know, great. the worst injury I've ever had, I went to the art studio and I made a painting, you know, and I sat there and I went, I wish people could be here to see what that process is, what happens to an artist when they get hurt, mm. you know? They don't try to lash out most of the time. They try to turn it into a bouquet of flowers. That's what I want to do.